ref slash umpire will just throw the ball into the air. He's a busy man. He's a multitasker. I think I saw him on Facebook earlier today doing an interview yeah. for the senior side. Handball there moving it on was Ryan McCrickard. He's been very good early. And Ryan now finds Josh Parry. And he might be within scoring distance now for the black team. Now, do you think you might pass it? Well, uh, I think he's I, looking I, confident, I but it's a, he's a fair way out. But I he, have a shot from there. He's made really good contact. I think that might have just snuck through. And that's the second goal to Josh Parry here. And the Black Tigers are away. It's uh, Gardner with it. Now it's gone out to Sam Hammond, who's got the free kick. He's going to go across oh. the face. It's a dangerous kick, but not a bad option. Tries to find McLeod. McLeod doesn't win, but now Parry does and gets it back to McLeod. McLeod drives a forward and kicks a worm burner. And McLeod has his first goal. In fact, that's his second goal for Hudson McLeod. There's the McLeod and Parry dominating early for the Black Tigers. Remember, they're wearing yellow. A quirk of nature in this intra-club Tigers game here at Kingston Beach Oval. Zachary Skolthorpe, oh, nice and they just handballs it back to Colson. Nice bit of teamwork. Driving the ball, oh. splendid mark. Is that Adams in defence? Oh. Wonderful mark. Now Heath works it out, gives himself a bit of space, then booms Boom. the ball long. That was a tremendous kick. Gets it in, look out, it is Colson again. Colson oh. on his left. Has he kicked a goal? He has. Oh, I just snuck it home, I think. I'm sure Sally Donnelly is going to bring me up a coffee any moment. Yeah, well, many many months ago we did head out and we got a special coffee when we were in Norfolk. This is a, right. an under-8s yeah. game, so probably no chance tonight. Although there's some food on and some other things happening here tonight. As there's a, a flying shot on goal from the right forward pocket, and that is goal of the day. And look who it is, it's Ben Colson and hugs all around from his mate in Cameron Burgess. And on the Crips the Master Baker replay, we see a star in the making with a left boot thriller, Jason Ackermanis like. That uh, was like Buddy. Buddy? On the left. Oh, wow, that was great. Well, I could kick them on both. So the gold team wearing black is Oliver. He's kicked that 30 metres. He's got a beautiful boot on him. Trousers, trousers. And Oliver, he could probably play a few grades up with kicking of that note. So the yellow team are the black side and the black team are the yellow side. Don't ask us why. It is just the way it is. I don't even understand how the wireless works, but that's kicked long. Oh, is there an opportunity goal. for a first goal? First goal within 35 seconds. And we might have to see a replay to see who kicked that one. Oh, gee, that was just bang. Some of these boys can really kick the old burly football. That was a great spot there. He's just gone into the, the right boot. He was able to, to win it out. And here's the uh, Crips replay. That is a bomb. It was. A wonderful kick. I think that was Link Lincoln Riley. So, the Black Tigers get one back. We'll just have to double check if that was uh, Lincoln who kicked that last goal. He's involved again. Gets a handball, but unfortunately doesn't go too far. And there's a mark to the Yellow Tigers. Robert Riley. Famous in a uh, Sinopolis Thistler. Robert Riley was mentioned in the song. He might not realise that by Sonic Animation. And now the ball's been taken now by Heath Turner. Heath Turner has been pretty useful for the Yellow Tigers. He's a fair distance out, Heath, and he's just moving back Whoa. into the middle third. So he's obviously keen that he's going to have a shot on goal. And the young lady down the left, she's pretty much got everything trying to cover her face to keep herself warm. Oh, well, it's yeah. not a bad effort, and I think he snuck it in. Yes, he has. Straight. I think that was Frost, Oliver Frost with uh, a lot of confidence. He kicks mm. the ball out. Now, there you go. Oh. Now Aaron Vince has to get moving as he quickly ducks that's backwards and makes sure he finds a brown one. Otherwise, he'll, have to, he'll get his first touch for the day. A, that's worth a replay of that. Yeah, uh, let's see that. That's there. some of his best moves. He probably hasn't played for a little while. I'm not sure. Yeah. He uh, certainly got on his bike then. Yep, good work. He could be. Look, that's, that's the type of move we want to see from boundary umpires. What's the best thing about coaching this group? Um, I think it's just uh, all the parents' involvement and just the way, yeah, 
all the parents come every week. They all lend their support and yeah, they're really behind their children in doing something, some sport. And what's the biggest challenge with, with under eights, uh, boys? Um, oh, I don't think there's that much of an issue because they all they they really do want to learn and listen. So I think that's a bonus for me yeah. and for the other parents that help out. So. Fantastic, mate. Oh, fantastic. You survived. We survived. It was a cold day, but yeah, uh, I think the boys had a really good game against two two quality King Brow outfits. Oh, how good. We saw some fantastic goals. How many left footers in both sides? Yeah, we've got, I think we've got about four or five in our team, so I think the other team had a few, so uh, they're starting to come through a bit more, the other left footers. So. Yeah, I know. And also, we've got a top knot over here. We're seeing some of these young lads replicate what actually happens out in the uh, the real world. Uh, role models. Now, I noticed early in the day, Aaron, there was a few King Rossini players here. Is that important to influence some of the younger players coming through? Yeah, we, we're very lucky. So we um, we have a lot of our senior players come down and do, they run our Oskip program down here um, on uh, Friday nights. And uh, on our bye weeks, they get around every single junior footy club and uh, go and take training. So uh, I think the junior footy club is really important. And, uh, Although our senior players don't realise it, uh, a lot of these younger kids look up to their look up to these players. So yep. I know a couple of players today were wearing Marcus Davies' number or Tim Peterson's number or Lockie Watts' number. So they really understand who the senior players are, and it's really important that they um, they get to replicate and wear some of the numbers. So it's really exciting. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And obviously you've got to start somewhere, don't you? How many of these players will kind of start to move up the ranks and? start to play with some of the other age, underage clubs for the Tigers? Yeah, look, well, we've still got a lot of first year, but they'll progress in the under nines and that next year. And uh, you've already, I've already seen a great development from the first training run to till, till the end of till today. I mean, they're playing some really good footy and starting to show. I mean, I know a few of them want to tackle, but they can't at the moment. But... We saw one tackle. He was actually tackling the ball. So <laughs> we think we'll let him get away with that because of the yeah. enthusiasm, mate. It's been a great day down here at Kingston Beach Oval. Thanks, mate. And uh, we thanks, need people, more people like you, Aaron, uh, doing great work in uh, local footy. Uh, thanks great job by as well. Fantastic yeah, work. great job here. Aaron Roberts signing out on Duff TV on a really chilly night here at the Kingborough Under-8s Intra-State Intra-Club Footy. And it's good evening to everyone out there.